Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few days ago, I received an email from a viewer asking me to check out an application called eVoto. Now that name sounded very familiar to me, so I searched through my emails, and sure enough, over the past year, year and a half, I've received at least six different emails from different people that work for eVoto asking me to check out the app, asking me to be an influencer, asking me how much I would charge, to do a video demoing eVoto and so on. And I receive emails like this all the time, people asking me to check out their software or to check out a product, and I really don't have time to do that. So I did as I normally do when I receive these types of emails. I just emailed them back and politely declined. Well, I received that email a few days ago, and the more I think of it, that probably isn't a viewer that emailed me. It probably is somebody else that works for Evoto. But anyway, I'm going to do a video on Evoto. I'm not being paid for it. They don't even know I'm doing it. Um, I think actually it's an excellent application, but I think their pricing is whacked. So I'm going to talk about the pricing at the end, but let's demo the app and let me show it to you. I think it actually is a really nice app. Now, when you open Evoto, you'll be presented with this screen. So you import Im images or drag them and drop them onto this little area here. Now, when you click on it, it's going to ask you to create a project. And that's the way all the images are set up. So every time you open up Evoto, you create projects. So in this case, this is a demo. So I'm going to call my project. If I could look at my keyboard around my microphone, there we go, demo. And I'm going to click save then it's going to say to bring these images in here. So I'll click here and on my desktop, I have a folder called demo and I have two Adobe stock images and one um, Sony RAW file, that's my mine. So I'll open this up. And so we're gonna have these three images and you'll see down here. Now we'll start with the uh, Sony RAW file, that's an image I took. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, we have some presets and it looks like the presets, now by the way, I'm far from an expert in eVoto. I just used it the last couple days to mess around with it. So if anyone out there is an eVoto expert, please mention in the comments below uh, any mistakes I make or talk about things that you could do in eVoto easier than the way I'm demoing them and stuff like that. Now anyway, you have these presets over here. Now, it appears to me that most of these presets are really set up for people. You can see you got glowing, that would be like a portrait, wedding, uh, baby and child, maternity headshots, and so on. So hovering over them doesn't do anything, so you really have to click on them. But because this is a landscape image, you're not really seeing much going on here. So these presets, probably for landscapes, aren't really applicable. So uh, nothing really much there. They do have a history panel you can see right here. You can see I applied three presets, then I reset it. So that's that. Now, over on the right-hand side, you have all the tools and adjustments that you could do uh, to the image. For some reason, no matter what image I open up into it, it always just defaults right to this tab right here, which is for portrait retouching. And it's, you can see it's on a female. It also has male, kid, and senior. But this obviously isn't a portrait. So we're going to go to the uh, tab right above it or the panel right above it. These are color adjustments. And you can see that we have this real-time color adjustments. Turn on this mode switch, check changes in real time. And just kind of goes faster. And you can just click this to uh, don't show this again. You have a histogram. You have some filters at the top. You have white balance. Then you have tone. Let's just jump right down to tone. Let me just kind of make everything a little smaller here. There we go. We'll go to Tone. And I found that the um, processing engine in Evoto is very powerful and it works really well. So typically, like we'll bring in highlights. Now, there's no way that I know of to get a white and black point uh, the way you would do in other apps. Like in Lightroom, you could hold in the Alt or Option key uh, or hit the J key and you know, other apps, you hit the J key. Uh, here, I've tried all that and nothing works that way. So it looks like you just kind of have to eyeball your white and black points. But again, correct me if I'm wrong. 
and you can see that it does a pretty good job. Um, we'll go through here. We have curves. Not going to do anything here. You have H HSL, so your typical HSL with U saturation and luminance with red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta sliders for each. So that is pretty typical. Not going to do much there with this. You have a detail slider here. You have sharpening and noise reduction. Uh, so you can see it gave some default sharpening already. There's really, I think this was shot at ISO 100. There's really no noise, but it has luminous noise reduction and color noise reduction as well. And then down here we have color calibration. And this, if you're familiar with Lightroom, looks very much like the calibration tab in Lightroom. So we have this image, and why did I pick this image? Well, you'll notice there's no clouds at all in the sky. This application actually has sky replacement, and I found that it's very powerful. So we'll go to this tab right here, and if I hover over it, I forgot what it's called. It's called Background Adjustments. We'll click on that, and you can see right here is Sky Replacement. So we're going to open that up, and we have a sky selection. Now, first of all, let's kind of look at the image and decide where's the light. If I remember right, the sun was directly behind me. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by hitting Command Plus. And you can see on this little tree how the um, shadow's going almost directly backwards. So the sun was pretty much directly behind me. So I want to make sure that the clouds match that. So we'll go here and this actually just glancing here and you'll see you pop it in there. And this looks pretty good, actually. So we'll just stay here. But you have a lot of different choices. You have different categories, blue skies, bright blue skies, sunset and sunrise skies, and starry nights, all included. All right. So you can see I put a reflection in there, and the reflection looks pretty good. So that, so far, is pretty neat. Now you have some sky adjustments. You have edge adjustments. This just gets, I guess, it blending better in around the edges. Temperature. I think that just affects the sky, yes. It doesn't affect the existing image saturation. Brightness, I would assume, too, yes. Just double-click on a slider to reset it. Sky blur, if you need to blur it a little bit, you can do that, or a lot of it. The sky opacity, and so on. Now, if we go down, we could flip the sky. I don't think I want to here. Uh, the color of the scene, this is the actual now, the original image. So if I move this to the right, you can see how it's kind of toning down the original image. If I move it to the left, it will make it a little brighter. I think making it a little brighter helps match it a little better. Now, if there was a human in here, you could uh, do you know adjust that as well. Water reflection adjustments to reflection amount. Obviously, if you move it to the right, it's going to come in stronger. Move it to the left a little lighter. I think here just a little lighter, maybe. Maybe not. But water blur. There, there, the... Water isn't perfectly still. There's a bit of a ripple on it. So I think that we should probably blur it slightly. See how you can blur it a lot. That's nice. I, so I think the sky replacement feature in this is very powerful and works very, very well. Now let's uh, move on to a different image. Let's go to this one. I'll show you some of the portrait um, adjustments that you could do with the application so we'll go to the portrait panel which is right here now this is a female now we have skin defects removal this slider or this little that's little triangles those are called expose triangles in case you were wondering so you click on that and open that up and you could uh face freckle and acne removal let's just max that out and see what it does you can see so it's it's pretty powerful body blemish remover in this case not applicable. Forehead wrinkles reducing. She has no forehead wrinkles. Dark circles reducing. She does have some dark circles. See, that one isn't as, like, overwhelming. But it does do the job. Smile folds reducing. This you get folds in your smile up here, I think. Yeah, you can see, like, around her nose. Here, there's off. And there's max. Ne neck wrinkles reducing, not applicable really here. Uh, double chin removal, not applicable. Pregnancy, pregnancy stretch marks removal. That's an adjustment I've never seen before, but that's there. Let's go down to the next part, skin retouching. Magic face skin, dodge and burn, not really sure. Ah, you can see a little bit. Hey, look in her forehead area here especially, you'll see. Just kind of rounds everything out. 
face skin smoothing, X that out. You can see it smoothed it out quite a bit. Body skin smoothing affects our arms here. Uh, ruddy complexion, you can see it just kind of evens out the complexion on her face a little bit. Affects the lighting, it seems too. Skin tone unifying. So if, you know, I don't know, her facial skin just wasn't all equal for whatever reason, you can see this ear is a little darker and see how it's brightening that ear skin color i guess you could just change that if you needed to don't want to do that that's ridiculous uh face reshaping let's close this down and go to that uh here you could do crazy things like this not sure you want to or why you would want to do this all right small face lower face face width chin height and forehead this i guess you could do if you have some if you something was introduced by your lens your know, lens distortion you could correct it here with this these tools that would come in handy uh teeth of course teeth whitening brightness and desaturation pretty teeth not sure what this does let's see I don't see any change there. All right. I'm really overdoing it already. Uh, you can see it's over-processed as it is, but let's just keep going. Uh, eyes. You can brighten her eyes. All right. Makeup. We could do highlights. Highlight. Contour. See, that's contouring her face. Eye makeup brightness. Lip adjustment. See with her lips. You also have these uh, makeup presets. Uh, let's go to youthful. Oh, well, that looks horrendous. Vintage. Oh my god. Okay, this isn't good at all. All right, let's just re, re uh, set the makeup section because obviously I had no clue what I was doing. Uh, reshaping. This is for body reshaping and slimming neck and stuff. And you can see that that's not applicable here. So you can see these tools are very powerful and it's very easy to overdo things like I just did. Like, oh my gosh, let's tone everything down here. Um, so you got to be careful with these, but very powerful um, skin retouching, face retouching, people retouching tools are in this application. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. And this last thing, uh, those other two things I showed you, I actually checked ahead of time to kind of get an idea how to use them this last one i didn't so we're going to just see if it works uh there they have a tool that apparently if you have a headshot like a studio headshot you could switch out the color of the background now i know on one photo raw 2023 can do this and it does an excellent job doing it let's see if it does it i actually have a, a video demoing it in on one photo raw 2023 using this exact same image and on one photo raw 2023 was able to uh, swap out the background color at least um like flawlessly it was able to do it perfectly in her hair and everything so we'll try it here we go to this background panel here and it is this headshot background changer right here so we'll go here and let's try red so let's just click on it yeah it did all right go to blue could go to this blue we could see all. We could see all the different colors we have to choose from. Go to green. How about a gray? We had a gray to begin with, right? Let's go to red. I think red looks pretty good. It didn't catch her hair in here that well. And I don't see a tool. Oh, there's edge adjustments right here. We'll move this. See what that does. Oh, that didn't work. So it didn't do such a great job right in here. So what you probably have to do is try to get a color that is would be less conspicuous in those areas that's missing, like that, something like that. So that's Evoto, kind of a quick overview. Again, I'm far from an expert on it, and if anyone is an expert, comment below stuff you like about it, stuff you don't like about it, what um, I did wrong, and what I could do to become better. But I mentioned, I think their pricing is whacked. Let me talk about their pricing. 
First of all, you could download it like I did. You get free trial, you get five free credits. Uh, one photo is one credit. So every time you edit a photo, you're using a credit. But it appears to me that you actually have to export the photo for the credit to be used. Meaning, I've been editing photos like six, seven, eight, nine photos in it. But I haven't exported anything. So I still have, I believe if I go right here, I still have five credits remaining. You can see, so I didn't use any credits. So I think you actually have to export the image for it to use a credit. So that is important to know. But here's where I think the pricing's a little whacked. If we go here, they default to yearly pricing, all right? So you can see, okay, it's, oh, it's $6.99 a month. It's $83.88 a year. So you're paying for the year, $83.88 a year. But they get you 1,200 credits. Well, I don't know. Do you travel a lot? Do you take a lot of photos? Are you a professional? Um, do you, are you gonna, going to be exporting more than 1,200 photos a year? Well, maybe you are. Let's go down. Let's say, you know, well, I do like 9,000 photos a year. So you let's go here. Whoa, now it's $42.99 a month. That comes to five fifteen eighty eight a year. Now, what if you say, okay, well, I want to pay monthly. Okay, so here we go. Seven ninety a month, nine seven ninety nine a month gets you a hundred credits per month. So you could export a hundred images per month. If I if I'm right about this, a credit not being used until you export the image. Um, but what if you like are traveling or something? Yeah, you're going to your dream vacation for a month, and you're gonna do. Whoa, that's $117.99 a month. Build monthly. You know, that's, to me, that's kind of weird. So let me know what your thoughts are on the pricing in the comments below. And um, I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you. Uh, overall, I, I do think it's a nice app. I don't like the pricing at all. And I'm not going to be doing, I'm not going to be doing any more videos going forward. At least I have no plans to do any more videos on eVoto uh, going forward. Uh, of course, that may change if they change their pricing, something like that. I might change my mind, but I don't think I'm going to. I just don't think their pricing, I, just something about it bugs me. But that's me. Uh, what about you? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.